What's up, people? We're going to be doing a special show today. You know, I love, you know, the fun shows. Every show is a fun show, but it's more important to me that I can give back. I've been afforded a lot of opportunities and blessings in my life, and when I can give back, it's always great. Now, uh, I want to start off tell you guys a little story, uh, a little story about a mother and father expecting a child that had a lot of complications, and they were told that their child would, you know, probably not be born, and if he was, they'd probably have a lot of problems. I'm not talking about Tim Tebow, I'm talking about somebody else. That person would be me. Thank God my parents decided not to do an abortion. They said, you know what, we're gonna love our child no matter what, and uh, other, than, other than delayed motor development, ADHD, and an overabundance of awesomeness, <laughs> I came out great. However, there are some people that, due to circumstances at their birth, they have faced, you know, troubles and they have faced things to overcome. And I have a special place in my heart because I say, but by the grace of God, there go I. I haven't had to face those things. So, you know, I feel, I feel greatly towards those people. And what's great is a lot of times I've seen, even though those people have faced those troubles, they have been blessed with parents that have overcome and have, you know, helped them along the way. And that's just great. And I have one of those parents with me today. I have my friend, Miss Christina Hodges here today. And she's just an awesome person. I've known you, what, like 20 years now? Probably 25, but yeah. Close to that. Close that's to a, that, yeah. That's a long awesome. time. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Awesome, I'm, I'm glad you came on. It, it's always great when people say they want to come on my show because I'm like, wow, that's cool enough that you want to come on. You know, so I mean, that's always, that always tickles me. Right. You know, so what, what was it like, you know, when you, when, when did you find out Jaron was autistic? Um, Jaron was two when we actually, two and a half when we got the medical diagnosis, but we figured around 18 to 20 months that there was some developmental delays. Um, he was talking, but it was one word you know, just basic mom and dad. And even as a baby, Jaron didn't like to be changed, his clothes, bathed, touched, you know, the normal things that babies like to be cuddled. He never liked any of that. And then we got the diagnosis. And as he got older, he regressed and quit talking and quit dressing himself, you know, normal things that two and three year old, four year olds are able to do, potty train, um, hold his fork a certain way, drink from a cup. Jaron was not able to do that. So okay. um, we started school therapy and at home therapy at two years old. He actually started doing that. Okay, and but you've come along with him and he's... We've come a long way. Um, he didn't talk till he was seven. He's still not able to do certain ADLs functions for himself and probably won't ever able be able to do, but now he can write and he can read and um, he can do math problems. He's a math genius. Um, oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. I can't do math problems. No, he didn't get it from me. <laughs> um, did not get that from me. But, I mean, he's come a long way. I mean, just the simple things that people take for granted, like your child being able to pull up their pants and button them and tie their shoelaces, um, Jaron's not able to do. But he is able to, you know, function as well as he can be. And we, he's exceeded the expectations for what we thought. And that's great. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just want to, you know, throw out there, you know, he's still completely awesome in he's many other awesome. ways. We yeah, covered in awesome sauce. Awesome. You know, we, uh, we, we do take for granted, you know, but it's important as people to realize, no matter what your station, what your point in life, that we all have strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I failed math I don't know how many times. I actually had to go to college remedial math. Now, right. you know, my English was above average, you know, thank God. <laughs> You know, my mama was a reading specialist educator, but right, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, <laughs> the math, it just mm -hmm. it wasn't there. The uh, numbers I can handle, but when you start throwing letters in the mix, yeah. no, letters need to stay with English. Yeah, and those little numbers too, those exponents and factoring, 
Yeah, you lost me. I'm, I'm, I have no idea what you're talking about at this point. <laughs> yeah, the only the only factor that matters is the is the uh, old Marvel X Factor comic. That was the only factor that I was worried about. But uh, you know, it's just it's important for us to realize as people that we all have strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. You know, and and oftentimes we take that for granted until, you know, we we see people you know like Jaron that you know have not had the same affordabilities that we have, right. you know, but he still, he does those math probably, probably better than me and you combined. Yeah. You yeah. Know? The, my 15 year old gets help from him sometimes. I mean, that's the, it just the honest truth. He can do the algebra that at nine years old that I can't do at 35 ever. 35, you don't pass for a day over 26. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think my biggest thing with autism is teaching people that just because my child's not the same as yours, he's not any less important. I think that's my... No, every child's important. Every child's important, but not everyone sees it that way. That My child's different. My child doesn't talk like your child. My child doesn't function like your child. My child doesn't walk that same line your child walks. But my child is just as much a human being as you Definitely. are. Yeah. That's my goal with this is, you know to spread that out that just because my son's different doesn't mean he's any less of a human being. No, definitely not. I mean, it's right. still awesome, no. you know, and, and I mean, we're all different mm -hmm. in our own way. I mean, it's just part of being human. I mean, if we were all the same, you know, that would that'd be a boring world. I mean, even, even if there was like a million of me running around, God help us all, but you know, they'd all be jockeying on each other. I'm the most awesome. I'm the most, and yeah, that's pretty much all it would be. <laughs> you know, so right. I mean, the variety and the and the, you know the the difference in people. It's awesome. Now, mm -hmm. you know, you have a, another goal. You told me you were you were getting a book published. I'm halfway through my book. Awesome. Um, I'm having a little difficulty with it because I I I lean not to to center it around teaching people that your child is like mine. I'm trying to set around that this is what happened in my life with my son, and this is the difficulties we went through, and this is the things that got me through it. They may not work with you, but, you know, and there's a lot of funny stories in there, and there's family stories, and, you know, pretty much um, all my, my parents and my children are putting in stories of what they felt like when Jaren was got diagnosed and what it was like being raised in a family with a child with this disability because it's not easier on the children in that household either especially when you have two older ones and he's the baby so automatically yeah. he's the baby so he's the favorite you know and it's just as I wouldn't know anything about that me neither <laughs> um, <laughs> it just is that he has to be handled a certain way yeah. you know and it's been difficult but we've we've made it through so more of your more of your focus is we had this set of problems mm -hmm. we found a way to overcome them it's not necessarily the the manner in which you overcome that but no. just the base that you found a way mm -hmm. and problems can be overcome yeah my and my children's there my son's therapy is not going to work the same as your son's therapy is going to work you know and my son's disability is not the same as your son's disability every form of autism is different i know several children with autism in my community and not a one of them is alike um, every one of them is on a different form of the spectrum and I think that's the hardest thing to understand is like not every child's like Rain Man but not every autistic child is nonverbal and cannot do anything for themselves and not every autistic child you know is the same but no and matter what with love and perseverance it can be overcome. Perseverance you know that's the main thing is you know staying on top of it and never ever settling for but the best for your child. And that's, you know. That's what any parent would do regardless. Now hopefully, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, that's what any good parent But you, would do. as an autistic parent, you have to fight a little harder, you know, to get those, get those services and get, Obviously, you know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find my best way to step around things, you know, because oh, I don't want to oh, say things and, you know, no. hurt the feelings of autism parents no. and people that are overcoming. We're, we're very thick-skinned. You, you know, have but, to be. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, I'd never purposely, you know, insult somebody like that. But you do face more challenges than, mm -hmm. you know, parents of children, you know, I don't want to say regular, but that don't face. Not on the spectrum. Yeah, that aren't on the spectrum, mm -hmm. you know. I get... I like that phrase. I'll start using that. Not you know? on the spectrum. You have yeah. to overcome more. And I mean, that's a lot to your credit mm -hmm. yeah. with that, too. And, you know, you talked about your family helping out, you know, mm -hmm. and that's great. And by the way, I want to give a big shout out to your dad, Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan, veteran of the U.S. Navy. Much love for him and the all, all the other G.I. Joes. Mm -hmm. I'll always have a great love for the U.S. military. Very special people to me. Much love to all of them. Now, I think we can take a time now to look at some of your family pictures okay. that we have brought and uploaded. Aww. 
And those are those are your your three uh, that's, awesome lits. That's Scarlett in the middle, and Jeremiah is on the right, and Jaren's on the left. Okay. The Lieutenant Dan Jr. right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's, Definitely. That's Jeremiah. Got to love that smile. Got to love it. <laughs> and that is actually Jamie Lynn Daniels. Um, she works. In Nashville, she has her own photography business, but she's oh, actually cool. started a foundation because of Jaren called Through My Eyes. And what she does is she takes autistic children and she off, she gives them a camera and they take different photos and it's centered around how they see the world. That's oh, why wow. it's Through My Eyes. So different soon, perspective, different perspective of it on the spectrum. So what happens is um, she's building a show and these kids' uh, pictures will be auctioned off and all the money will go to therapy. Um, equipment and medical expenses that parents around here can't afford because on top of the dealing with everyday situations with autism, the financial aspect yeah. will find, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, um, my mom always said that, you know, gifts were, mm -hmm. you know, gifts. They weren't just for us, but we should use them to give to others right. as well. You know, and my dad, he always, you know, instilled a sense of charity, right. you know, to help those. So, I mean, that's great that yeah. she's doing that. These are all her photos. As you can see, she's an amazing photographer, and her and Jaren have such an amazing bond. He is the only person, really? yes, she is the only person that he will let take his picture. Um, I mean, aside for school pictures, he won't smile. But something about those two together is just, it's breathtaking the way they are together. She It just clicks. Uh, she loves him, and he loves her. And that's great. And you will never... You can't do wrong, and he she can't do wrong in his eyes. I mean, hey, the world can never have too much love. And that's, that's and she's she's amazing, and she's been a blessing to my family with Jaren. You know, just because sometimes when I feel down and I feel overburdened, I know I can message her, and she'll be right there. You know, that's to, awesome. to talk to me about it. Yeah, that support. Yeah, she's awesome. Oh, that's pretty cool, right there. Cutie. And that's our Scarlet at Northwest Florida last year. Um, my daughter's actually in the Northwest Florida pageant system, and they've also been another big supporter of the autism awareness really? in our community. Oh, yes. Um, they've actually handed out titles for girls who have raised enough um, amount of money to go to Northwest Florida, and they're the spirit of whatever division they're in, like we did the spirit of Spanish Trail last year, and that girl got to go into Northwest Florida and compete because she raised several hundred dollars for autism awareness that we use to, again, buy medical supplies and equipment for parents who couldn't afford it. So the Northwest Florida pageant system has been a big supporter of it. Um, in fact, my daughter and the director, Rob Mount, they did an autism walk in Washington County last year and raised money for the awareness. That's great. I mean, they were, all the queens were there and they, I've been really blessed with the Northwest Florida pageant system being involved That's great. with it. And they, they really are a great foundation. And it's good to have, you know, there's stimulations on beauty queens not, you know, doing anything for the community, just wearing a crown. Northwest Florida girls are definitely girls that do more than just wear the crown. They're out there involved. That's good that they, mm -hmm. you know, they can give back and help out. Like that. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. But. Oh. So, like some wheat or? He's in the, one of Jamie's fields, her dad's field. I think it's wheat. Oh, cool. I don't know. I stayed in the car. That was nature. <laughs> oh, and who is that sexy man right there? That'd be Travis. <laughs> For those of y'all that don't know, that's my cousin, Travis Ham. Mm -hmm. He is absolutely hamtastic. Big shout out to you, cuz. Mm. Yep. And there's Jamie and Jaren again. You can definitely tell they have a bond they there. They do. They're amazing. I mean, you can see it. And that's Big Bubba. And that's Jeremiah and Jaren. That's a wonderful message mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, I've been blessed with a son um, and a daughter that just totally accept and don't hate or regret that Jaren was born the way he is. And I say regret every parent has that what if our child had not been born with this, you know, because yeah. you have a normal pregnancy, you do what the doctor tells you to do, you know, everything falls in the line and then, you know, this happens. You know, we you don't feel robbed. Some people say they feel robbed. I never feel robbed. Um, I do feel like it wasn't what I signed up for. It's not the trip I signed up for. Yeah. But it's sure a journey that I'm love taking. I mean, I'm loving the trip. I'm loving the journey. I mean, Obvi obviously, no parent would want their child to have no. to overcome, you know, such difficulties. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm glad that you can take what you've been given and reflect on it. You know, mm -hmm. and 
you know, it's great that he was placed in such a family, you know, that, that cared about him. Right. You know, I'm, I'm glad that God put him there. Uh, my grandmother know. always said God only gives special children to special people. Indeed. And it wasn't until I got Jaren that I really understood that. And as again, I was saying, you know, my children are a blessing because uh, Jeremiah never talks about adult life without Jaren beside him. When, and what I mean, I'm saying it's like he never talks about his plans for his future, that he doesn't plan Jaron being along with him. That's great. I mean, and we all have that fear as parents with children with disabilities is what happens if we pass on or God forbid we can't take care of them anymore. Yeah. And even at 10 years old, Jeremiah was always reassuring me that, you know, Jaron would be taken care of, you know, no matter what Jaron would be with him. Now, I don't know how he'll feel when he's older and out of the house and has a life of his own, but I imagine with Jeremiah, he, uh, Jaren's going to be right there beside him. He's still going to be a big brother. He's going to be right there beside him. <laughs> still. That's they're, they're, they're amazing together. And there's times where, I hate to say this, but we don't always understand what Jaren's saying because of the speech dis disability. Yeah. And Jeremiah is so in tune to him that he can get it right off the bat. So the, it, it's, a, it's a bond like that with siblings. I think so. You know, like, like with me and my brother, we uh, honestly, we, we can't play Battleship together we we put our boats in the same place i mean yeah. it's crazy except for sometimes my brother will call he'll be like f-13 mm -hmm. i know you have that aircraft carrier hanging <laughs> off the side of the board and i'll be like it's in dry dock <laughs> I, I don't cheat though i call it no, creative no. I, game I, play. I would never imagine you cheating no not me that's mm -hmm. creative game play sure <laughs> So now you were when you were talking about uh, publishing your book, mm -hmm. you were you had special plans for the proceeds with that, right? I do. I plan on, if possible, um, opening a school for children in our community with autism or on the spectrum. I don't like to say autism because there's Asperger's, there's autism, and there's kids who just fall on developmental delay on the spectrum. Okay. Um, be, our oldest son is developmentally delayed in certain aspects, which he would deem. Asperger's, but his IQ level so high, they are not able to classify him as that. But he functions, and his OC, I call it his OCD because he so has it, is not the same as a normal child. He doesn't see things as a normal kid. Okay. I mean, he's high intelligence, but like how he learns, it has to be taught on a different level. Yeah. You know, it just. You know, we, we all have different, we all learning, have different styles. learning styles. I would like to see a school opened up for the Holmes, Washington, and Jackson County area just for children on the spectrum. That that would be a good thing. You it know, would be great. That, it that may would be, serve a need. It may be 20 years in the making, but I'm trying. Better late than never. Okay. I mean, you we'd know. love to have it right now, but if it takes 20 years, it takes 20 years. then I mean, at least those kids from 20 years mm -hmm. on, they have what the other kids did. They have what the other kids different. And the problem, and I love the school system in our area, but I mean, sometimes our kids just need an extra amount of attention and teachers are so overloaded. And there's so many different laws now where even children with a disability have to be taught as a normal child, what we say not on the spectrum, yeah. and not everyone can be taught that way. Common yeah. Core, I'm looking at you. Mm. Oh, common God. Core. I promise not to use profanity on mm -hmm. this show, but Common Core. Oh, I said it again. Can we bleep that out? <laughs> <laughs> but I, that, feel, I feel the same way, you know. That's great that, that you're willing, I'm, you know. I'm, it, it may never, but it may, um, but that's our goal is to open up a school so no parent has to decide, you know, what part of their child's education do they have to, you know, sacrifice. sacrifice. In order to, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, it's great that, you know, you noted that, you know, the teachers can only do so much, you right. know, because I know a lot of teachers and I know them all to be good, caring I've people. I've got some great teachers in, you know, our schools, our school district, and I went to Jackson County School and I have some amazing teachers, you know, that I'm still friends with to this day. and. You know, they can only do so much. Their hands are tied. You know, I have, exactly. you know, thankfully I have my children in private school. The boys, they go to the Christian School Grace and Glory in Chipley. Okay. So they're able to work with their, you know, learning ability. And I see the difference where, you know, now in their grades where they're both straight A's, where they were struggling to get by. In public school, in the public they, don't, school. Have the, they and, don't have the ability to and, do. And the amazing thing is they're taught on the Becca program, which is so much more structured than normal public school. Really? Mm -hmm. The homeschooling program, you okay. know, the Becca. Mm -hmm. well, that's and I don't cool. have to deal with the FCAT. <laughs> you know, um, possibly I shouldn't say this on the air, but I am anyways. Because oh I don't care. I'm a rebel and I don't care. But Me. my my senior year was the year that, uh, trying to find the right words, that they took, they gave us the FCAT in order to gauge 
what the FCAT would be. They implemented it, I think, like a year or two after me. Right. But they gave us basically, I guess you call it the measuring stick test. Mm -hmm. And um, even though uh, they, uh, even though I think it was March when they gave it to us, I was humming Oh Christmas Tree the whole time. Christmas Tree did. So further students, you can thank me. You guys that barely skated by, you can thank me for helping you out there. Damn old school, we had CTPS test. CTPS. A yonker is a young man. Okay. For some reason, that is still ingrained in my head after all these years. A yonker is a young man. Make your mark heavy and dark. Oh, my. All that good stuff right there. So uh, what, uh, what specifics would that school entail for? I think it would be <clears throat> more of the ESC teachers teaching children like doing the, the test that you would have to do to assess how they would have to learn. Like every child learns differently and I don't want overcrowding and you have to go on their strengths and teach them from that. I mean, they may not graduate with an actual diploma, but they will graduate with some kind of basic skills to help them out in adult life. And they deserve that. Uh, every, absolutely, they every deserve child that. deserves I mean, that. Obviously, mm -hmm. we, might not, we might not be able to give them the education the same as the children off the spectrum, but they deserve the best as what could be afforded right. to them. There's, there's no reason to not yeah. do that. And that's great, and I really hope you know that you can make that happen and I myself I'm, I'm not sure how much you know but I, I, I promise to pledge some towards that. Oh I appreciate that. To try really and make do. that happen that'll be that'll be my little bit. I'm a big believer in karma and right now I need some good karma in my life. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> you know it's a, it's a troubling time right. you know with a lot of stuff going on but you know at the same point in time you know even through your struggles you mm -hmm. find strengths you know there's times that I've looked back on my life things that I've come through and you know I've looked back and you know, that which does not kill you make you stronger. Now, of course, by this time, I should be able to bench press a Mack truck, but... They say I could probably bench press, you know, the Empire State Building if that was true. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I'd pay good money to see that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. So, but it's it's great that you're willing to do mm -hmm. that. And, you know, I really hope that comes together and... Me too. ...those kids get what they deserve. Like I said, it's a, it's a dream of mine, and it's, a, it's probably a dream of most parents that I've, I'm friends with, with the Autism Society, is to have something local. And it's not saying that the systems that we have are bad, it's just sometimes, you know, we need something that's structured just for them, that they'll get all the attention they need. Even if there's only 10 kids in there or if there's 100, but the problem of it is, is I hate to say it, but autism is becoming an epidemic. When Jaren was diagnosed, there was one in every 150 children. Last year it was 88. This year it's around 68. Wow. One out of every 68 children is somehow on the spectrum. Wow. That's mm -hmm. like almost a 30% increase. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, that, and he's only, I mean, he's only been diagnosed for seven years. So could you imagine seven years from now? If it keeps going at that rate, it'll be much higher. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. And, and, you know, like you said, that's not saying anything bad. I mean, no, like, but you I know, mean, a, a Ford... A Ford 302 engine is good to put in a Mustang if you want to race it, but it's not very good to, you know, put in a, a truck that you're going to be hauling things right. with. It's not suited for that. Similarly, you know, a, a you know a Cummings diesel works good in a semi, but you, you wouldn't want to put it in a speedboat. Um, you just spoke Cambodian to me, so I mean, <laughs> I don't <laughs> understand vehicles. <laughs> Well, basically what works in one won't work yeah. in the other. And he you know. promised he wouldn't embarrass me and ask me any questions I didn't know the answer to. <laughs> Just nod and smile and, and we'll, we'll go with that one. And yeah. I've tried my best not to. I try, I, not, I try not to do that to any of my guests oh, no, unless I know they can, unless they can take a joke, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want this girl getting violent with me. I'm just thinking if I can turn the engine on, if I can put the key in it and turn it, I know how to do it. You're good. Yeah. I'm good. We got just a few more minutes that we can do. Is there anything else you want to throw out there or talk about? I just like to th I'd like to thank my parents. I have had amazing parents. Um, my mom, and my dad, and my stepmom, my stepdad have always been there for me. Um, anytime, even if it meant just taking the older two children so I could focus more on Jaren. Um, yeah. Or if it's I have an appointment, and, and that's another thing is you know you just can't put these children in daycare. Um, most daycares won't accept them, they're not acceptable for them, or you worry about them in a daycare, yeah. you know. Um, and if you have to go somewhere, even to the store, that is a big production for some children. Some children, it's okay because it's sensory overload. Yeah. Um, and for my son, it, 
I, I imagine he'd rather have a root canal before he would go to Walmart. What? I, it's, it's too much noise, the beeping, the, the patter of the feet, you know, all that is like painful for him. That's wild. I, I love Walmart. Mm -hmm. I feel like a celebrity. No. Even a haircut is a production. Really? I mean, yeah. We had to wait till he was asleep till he was like seven, so he's never had a decent haircut. Um, oh, wow. It's, it's, I mean, and that's the little things people don't think of. Um, yeah. You know, the, the seam on your sock and the seam on your clothes, we have to have all seamless. So, I mean, you just can't get everything, you know, in one place for him. Like, if you wanted to go to the store and buy him a pair of socks that have seamless, you just couldn't pick up any brand of socks and take it home and expect him to wear it. It's it's a challenge, you know. Truly things I'd never thought about mm -hmm. before. Um, I mean, textures of food. That's a lot um, of insight. Mm -hmm. You know, you're giving the, wow, you know, and, and, I, and I hope the people watching, mm -hmm. you know, can learn a lot from this, you know, because the thing is, a, a lot of people, it's not that they don't want to understand autism or well, what you, you're dealing it's with. It's hard to understand because you can't physically put, an autistic child doesn't look autistic. I yeah. mean, and I hate, oh my God, that is one of my biggest pet peeves. Don't ever ask me and tell me my child does not look autistic because there is no look. Or, you yeah. know, or is he just hyper? Or, you know, are they sure the doctors made the right diagnosis? Or my favorite is, is everyone's got an autistic cousin and they want to tell me what works for them is going to work for my child. And that is, I'll never meet, for you, you do have an autistic cousin. <laughs> you have Jaren. So yep. you can tell me what works. Um, but that is, you can't go anywhere where someone doesn't have an autistic cousin. They want to tell you what works for them. Um, and I mean, it does, but I mean, you know, don't take into hindsight if I don't listen to you because I've been doing this a bit longer. Yeah, a lot and, um, longer. You know, again, too, when you see a child in a store having a meltdown, just don't assume that that parent doesn't care. Just assume that that child may be having a hard time dealing in that store. We, uh, we were in Disney two years ago and Stitch, you know, the little character ran over to Jaren and Jaren had a complete meltdown. Oh, wow. Threw himself out of his chair, <laughs> crawled, crawled into a ball and screamed for like 30 minutes. Oh, wow. And it was so loud he was heard over the, the concert that was going on. Oh, wow. And, and like people were walking up to me and I'm like, just let me center him, you know, so we all kind of put a barricade around him until yeah. he was okay. And then bless his heart, the guy that was in the Stitch costume kept like trying to come over and touch him. And I was like, please don't. <laughs> he does not like Stitch. So, I mean, you got to assume that every child you see misbehaving that you assume is misbehaving. It may just be an autistic child trying to struggle being in your world. And, you, and know. you know, that's, that's something that, you know, we really don't have any... Mm -mm you know, frame of reference for because we haven't experienced that, you know, as a, as a parent, right. you've experienced that, but we don't know being in their shoes, right. you know, what it's like. So if my other two don't act like that, that's a different story, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, uh, I think we're going about to wrap up. We're okay. about out of time, but I do appreciate you being on here and all the things you've shared. And I hope the people at home have come away with a little bit more understanding right. about things and, um, I think this has been a good show. I think it's been great. I've had a lot of fun. So I want to I want to close out by first of all saying, Jaron, you're awesome, dude. Thank you. You're awesome. You really are, man. And you know, seeing seeing you overcome the things you overcome, it it helps me with my life. Seeing people overcome mm -hmm. things, you know, because I look at things in my life and I'm like, okay, you got to deal with this. It's not cool, but it's rather trivial when you see what other people are overcoming. Right. And to tell everybody else, uh, before I leave, I forgot my famous two questions. Okay. Ah, you thought I was going to skate out. I thought so. I thought I was Number gonna get one, who's it. your favorite Transformer? Bumblebee. Bumblebee, that's everybody, that's the new poster. But Jaren likes um, okay. this guy, Optimus Prime, isn't it? I love Optimus. Yeah, that's he's my, an Optimus person. That's, that's, my, that's my role model. Right. And number two, you found the awesomeness within yourself. What can you tell about finding other people finding their awesomeness? Well, my son was my awesomeness. All my children were, but especially Jaren, so... And learning that I had to go a different route. I didn't, I didn't get to take the road that everybody else got to take. I had to make my own road. So to find the awesomeness in yourself or the awesomeness in your situation, make your own way because no one can make it for you. That's cool. Good advice. We're going to have to wrap it up to make sure we don't run over 30 minutes. Awesome. Everybody, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. The power to be awesome is in all of us. You just got to get in touch with it.